Hey everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. I am Austin Ward. That is Jeremy J.B. Birmingham and Spencer Holbrook. This is Rapid Reaction. It's always brought to you by Byers Auto. Uh, it's also a practice report, which, by the way, we'll finally get to see one of those in the coming days. So stay tuned for uh, some more coverage of the Buckeyes and more insightful coverage, hopefully. We're going to do our best anyway today, as we always do, after the defensive backs talked uh, on Thursday morning. Ohio State's about at the halfway point of spring camp. Uh, just a small group. Um, some limited returners for the Buckeyes in the secondaries. They try to recover from that uh, number 122 pass defense in the country last year. We've explained the reasons for that, but Berm, obviously it's still a motivation for Matt Barnes in that unit to get it corrected. Yeah, I mean, how can it not be? Every single day, every single moment, uh, they're being reminded of how bad they were last year. And, you know, the the reasons for being that bad are, are plentiful. They are varied, but they, they do not matter. And it's a results-oriented business. And if Ohio State wants to be better, they have to be better. And, uh, you know, if you don't want people talking about how bad you stunk, then don't stink anymore. And uh, it, it, it's certainly an interesting spring because, as we know, I mean, you're missing – Court Williams, you're missing Cam Brown. There's other players that are, you know, not getting a lot of uh, time right now. And it, it's a very valuable spring for a lot of young guys. And, and as Marcus Williamson said, it, it may be as talented as any room he's been in at Ohio state. And he's been there around some pretty talented guys, but th these are people that have to let it go on the field. And I think what Matt Barnes said that was most interesting and really hammered on was the fact that they're not, they're just teaching football. They're just teaching concepts. They're teaching, you know, how, to, to see the game again, as opposed to a lot of the worry about, you know, who's playing where. Well, and, and part of that is to trying to find the right spot for those guys. Obviously, nailing down the cornerback role is challenging in the spring. If you're taking the, the half empty look, if you have, you know, seven banks who you know, was dealing with a little bit of injury late last season, probably not getting uh, much, if any reps at, at all this spring doesn't, doesn't, you know, he, he certainly needs it, but he also needs to be healthy. Same is true for Cameron Brown, who's been limited. We know that uh, and will be until the summertime. You know, so you take Sean Wade, he's going to the NFL draft. Uh, if you have any restrictions on seven banks, who I thought was playing as Ohio State's best corner at the end of last year, and then Cameron Brown, those are your top three guys from a year ago. You know, that's that's removed from the equation right now. So And you lose Marcus Hooker, and Court Williams is out. And, you, I mean, there, there are certainly – so that major is, opportunities for young guys, right? That is the half empty or, or less than, you know, maybe even three quarters empty look. Uh, but the flip side is that that means that Josh Proctor gets to make a role his own at safety. That means that Lathan Ransom gets a shot at that to make that slot corner and develop after he gets a full year um, uh, for Ryan Watts, for legend Cavazos, for Cameron Martinez. That means a lot more reps are available to them as they are going through that process with Matt Barnes. So that's, there's a, it, it's always, you know, a zero sum game in spring. And, and that's going to be the case for uh, the secondary until they actually get to play somebody in September. Yeah. I think that I'm going to look at this with a half full or maybe even more than half full approach uh, because the only person we've heard from Ryan day and Kerry Combs and Matt Barnes and all of these guys is Lathan Ransom. He's getting a lot of reps this spring. He seems like a guy who's really starting to come into his own, really starts to get comfortable. I think he, could be an answer that really helps the secondary. He's, he's a smart guy. He knows where to be, how to be in the right position. He picked up the defense really well. And then Cam Martinez seems to be making some progress. You're getting Ryan Watts, some, some reps. Legend Cabazos is, is getting some reps. And then you got guys like Denzel Burke and who I know Burma is really high on this secondary can be very talented. And the fact that they're getting all of these younger guys, these reps, it, it makes you think that they have a little bit of confidence that these guys are going to be ready by the time the season rolls around because they're getting all of these reps in the spring. I don't think Berm was the only guy really high on Denzel Burke this morning. No, uh, Matt Barnes was raving about him. I mean, and, you know, I, I asked Matt Barnes about him because I've heard just through the grapevine people saying that he's been uh, an eye opener and that they were getting way more out of him than they expected. And I think that, you know, you look at an entire secondary full of just athletes that are trying to figure out where they fit in. And then you start to wonder with Ronnie Hickman, with Bryson Shaw. I mean, these are names we're not hearing right now. But again, because that's what Matt Barnes said. They're not even worried about depth charts. Not even, so we're only hearing about guys really that we're asking about. So it, it becomes sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. But, um, you know, if you talk about the back end of this defense, there, there's going to need to be people to step up. And 
you have talented guys like Josh Proctor, who's one of the most physically talented defensive backs in America. I don't think anybody who's ever seen him play is going to question that. But what Josh said today is is the the thing. Like, can he be consistent? Can Josh Proctor be the the player that Josh Proctor can be every play of the game? And that is the difference maker for Ohio State. When you have a guy like Jordan Fuller, who maybe wasn't as good physically, but Jordan Fuller didn't make mistakes. And so you have a group of guys right now in that secondary with Marcus Hooker out who and Josh Proctor in there. These are guys that made a lot of mistakes, and, and those are the things that have to be cleaned up. And I thought the, one of the most interesting things Josh Proctor said today was in that Matt Barnes maybe teaches defense better for these guys in a way that they understand better. And one of the things he said was learning why they're playing a defense that they're playing. Like he said, you know, trying to figure out why we're actually playing that defense. Um, because if you don't have that understanding or that total buy-in, even if it's because it's just miscommunicated, it becomes very hard to play defense against teams like Alabama. And I, I, I noticed that too, Berman. I don't think that that should be interpreted as a, a knock against the way Jeff Halfley or Kerry Combs teach it because they're both very good. Both had a lot of success doing that. Sometimes that's just the way that you say it when you become mature enough to understand it. And that has been, um, you know, the, the, the process for Josh Proctor in all, in all walks of it on off the field over several years to grow up and become a more mature football player, a, a more mature man. Cause he is somebody that, you know, dating back to going down there to meet him in Oklahoma and, ta- and talk to him when he was a senior in high school, you know, it was always going to take some time. Everybody knew that, but to watch it and to, compare with now to three and a half or four years ago is pretty remarkable to see the development. So it's, I don't think that it's necessarily the way that Matt Barnes teaches compared to somebody else. I think that Josh Proctor is will is, is ready to understand it. No, I, I, I want to follow up and say, I totally agree. Sometimes it's not about that. The messenger has changed. It's about the person receiving the message has changed their ability to hear it. And so I think you're absolutely right. And, if, yeah, go ahead. Spencer. If I can add something about Josh Proctor, his tone was way different this year than I've this this spring than I've seen him before. Normally, he's talking about his instincts and he needs to trust what he sees and things like that. Today, it was all about communication and just being better and and leadership. And when you go from you know you're an athlete and you need to be a better athlete to I know I'm an athlete but I need to be a better communicator and leader and guy on the field for my teammates, that's when you start to take that step to where Jordan Fuller was. And that's why I asked him about Jordan Fuller. And now that he's taking that step, I think you're going to see a new Josh Proctor on the field this year. And and to be candid, because of what you're talking about, when Jordan Fuller wasn't there, they needed somebody to do that. Josh Proctor, you know, I think he was ready to do that. Maybe not take the huge step that he could from this spring to the fall, but because he was still being jostled around and moved around because of those COVID issues, because of what happened in the secondary with, uh, the lack of numbers and the attrition and depth chart and all that. He didn't have that opportunity. Well, he does now. They're not going to move him around in spring. They don't have the flexibility to e- even do that if they wanted to at that position. So uh, Josh Proctor gets to make it his own. He's feeling the game slow down. Uh, everybody, that's a bit of a cliche at this point, but he's been on the field you know, long enough now where that should actually be true and resonate for him and the overaggression has always been his weakness. And the fact that he says that out loud tells you that he understands what he needs to do to get better. So that's, that's a big deal. That spot has to be solidified. Uh, Josh Proctor looking to do that uh, compliment probably with Lathan Ransom. And then you got to figure out where Marcus Williamson in the fifth year, uh, Berm made him cry on Thursday morning, uh, just talking about his journey. Uh, but it is a pretty inspirational one. And he, um, he had a lot to say about it, Berm. I don't think a lot of people on the outside looking in truly understand what the goal of college football coaches are from the minute that a player gets on campus the first day. And that goal is to make you quit. And for a lot of these kids, there are moments that come in their career, whether it's a year in, whether it's three years in, where they simply feel like it's time to move on. And I mean, Marcus Williamson said he was updating his resume and trying to think about life after football. And Whatever happened in the last two years to have that light turn on internally, um, you can tell the difference in, in talking to Marcus Williamson now and the maturity level that he has now. 
as he did three years ago. And, and I have some, you know, I covered him when he was a junior in high school. So I've known Marcus a while and you can just see that something is different. And, you know, you don't, maybe he's not the most talented guy on that roster, but it's not always about who's the most talented. It's about who has the most to, you know, to, to lose and who has the most to play for. And um, Marcus is a valuable piece of that secondary right now because of that leadership and the understanding that, Hey, this is not something you can just take for granted. Like you can't be Mr. You know, four-star recruit playing at IMG Academy, thinking that this is just going to be easy. Once you get to Ohio state life, life becomes very hard. And these kids have to deal with a lot of things. Yeah. I think is there anything else. His story is awesome. And, you know, as somebody who's covering the team now for this, is my third year, I didn't even know the full extent of his story, the way, the way Berm does because Berm's covered him for so long, but but to hear him talk about his motivation, what drives him, it makes you think that, you know, he has one, one last year to get this thing right and to make himself known and, and to be a factor in that secondary. And uh, I'm not going to be the one to bet against him, especially after hearing that. I was kind of ready to run through a brick wall for him. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the more uh, interesting Zooms we've had. Those, those conversations used to be a lot more, you know, frequent with veterans. So when they, you'd be around them and get to know them in person and talk to them, uh, tells you a little bit about uh, – Marcus Williamson's mentality and confidence and self-belief at this point that, that he's able to talk about it through these screens and uh, you know, maybe that Berm just brought it out of him uh, and that relationship helps as well. But uh, that was a, a good morning with that secondary, a lot to prove uh, a lot of work to go, not going to be a finished product by April 17th. I don't think by any stretch of the imagination, but you can see that groundwork being laid by Matt Barnes and those veterans in the uh, secondary trying to reclaim that BIA moniker, yeah, Burn. I want to say one more thing, if I can. Um, Matt Barnes was talking on this on this Zoom this morning about how Maybe. he's how he's not a known commodity and that he's okay with it. I think that if 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 people are out there watching our video and listening to us talk, please go to our YouTube channel and watch Matt Barnes and see why Ohio State believed when they had an opening when when Greg Madison retired that he was the right guy for that job because Matt Barnes may not have the name recognition that a lot of coaches around the country have, or that maybe Ohio state fans wanted to fill that role, but the dude gets it. And he is a, a really good fit for what Ohio state is doing. And, and you can see why, I mean, just the respect in the, you know, that he gets from the players. I don't think people really understand why Ryan day felt so good about uh, the promotions he made. And then to hear Matt Barnes talk about Parker Fleming, like, I mean, you, you can see it. These guys really, these guys really buy into uh, each other and and hopefully for Ohio State that translates to an improvement on the defensive side of the ball this upcoming year yeah as Spencer said if you're going to place a bet down right now I would I would guess that that secondary will be vastly improved it would obviously uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to move up from number 122 but good chance with the talent they've assembled and that coaching staff that they can make a leap back up to where they they think they belong in the top of the country we'll see there's still uh, half of a spring camp to go in the summer and all of training camp before they play a game at Minnesota. Uh, that's getting ahead of it, but we'll cover it every step of the way here at Letterman Row. That's Berm and Spencer Holbrook. I am Austin Ward. This has been brought to you by Byers Auto. If you need a new or used car in Central Ohio, go to Byers Auto. If you need Ohio State football information, go to lettermanrow.com.